Good morning, it's Councillor Glenn. Uh, today I'm on the Trans Canada Trail just west of Stittsville Main Street and behind me you might recognize this building. This is the old Butler House or Green Hotel. It's actually the only building on Stittsville Main Street that's designated under Part 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act. So the only official heritage building dates back to the uh, late 19th century. And now it is home to a new coffee shop, Ritual Coffee Shop. Um, so congratulations to Chi and all of her staff on a successful opening this week. Uh, a, a perfect spot right on the corner of Stittsville, Maine and Abbott. There are actually a number of uh, uh, new business openings lately. I was also at the Farm Boy on Thursday morning on uh, Carp and Hazel Dean for their new store opening. And uh, this evening I'm dropping in with the mayor on Masakali Restaurant, They're the new uh, Indian restaurant. Uh, near the Value Village Plaza on Hazel Dean Road, uh, Stittsville's first Indian restaurant. And uh, not a business, but also a, a grand opening of sorts. Uh, we had the official launch of construction for the public high school in Stittsville at the corner of Robert Grant and Cope. Uh, so it's great to be joined by MPP Gamari, Trustee Lynn Scott, a number of school board officials, and importantly, uh, several parents who were on hand, including some parents who've been involved for many years in advocating to have that school built. So great to see construction off to a, a good start. Construction actually started back in April, but uh, uh, because of COVID and so on, they couldn't organize the official launch until this week, but it was good to be there for that. Um, I've got lots going on. Uh, first of all, I wanna say congratulations to two Stittsville residents who were inducted into the Order of Ottawa this week. Uh, Ruba Fatal was a recipient for 2020. Uh, Ruba was recognized for, for her volunteer work, uh, for her contributions to the commu community, and uh, Pat Kelly recognized for his contributions to the tourism industry. Uh, Ruba lives in the uh, Abbotsville Crossing neighborhood. Pat lives in the Crossing Bridge neighborhood. Anyhow, congratulations to both of you, and I'll be sharing some more information about, uh, about their accomplishments on my website uh, over the weekend. Uh, lots of attention, obviously, this week to vaccines and the great news yesterday from Health Canada that kids ages 5 to 11 uh, will be eligible for vaccines. So Ottawa Public Health is ready to go as soon as the supply is received. And there are going to be all sorts of options where if you have children between 5 and 11, all sorts of options for where you can get a vaccination. So uh, watch for that information rolling out over the next few days. Here in Stittsville, of course, uh, you'll be able to go to a pharmacy. You'll be able to go to the Eva James Clinic in Canada that I know many adults went to. And they're also opening a clinic at A. Lauren Cassidy School. This will be open after school hours, so after all the kids leave. Um, so there'll be another option there for, for parents looking to get their kids vaccinated. And I'll keep sharing information through my website, Facebook, email newsletter, and so on uh, as soon as we have additional info for you. Lots of attention this week. Of course, we're on LRT. You might have heard that the province has said they're going to launch a public inquiry. This is kind of interesting because it's, it's different than the judicial inquiry. It's different than the Auditor General's inquiry that, that uh, we've been talking about the last few weeks. Um, I'm, I'm interested in learning more about the scope of what the provincial government is actually proposing. I think it could be helpful. Um, there's an important difference in the public inquiry versus a judicial inquiry. What they do is they hire a commissioner and that commissioner uh, is given a fixed date to deliver a report as well as a fixed budget and the province pays for it. In the case of a judicial inquiry, it's very much open-ended. Uh, it can take many years, can cost millions of dollars um, and the city would have to pay for it. So anyhow, if the province is calling for the inquiry, they pay for it, that's a good thing. And what they've been talking about is having a report back within about a year, which is useful because if there are um, things in the report that would help us uh, build more reliability and confidence in the system, it'd be better to know that sooner rather than later. So I think uh, a public inquiry in tandem with the Auditor General inquiry that we've already launched uh, and is, is about to begin, I think uh, will be should be helpful in uh, getting us some of the answers. I had a chance uh, to take uh, LRT downtown on Wednesday. I had a transit commission meeting, so I took the, the, the bus from Stittsville, transferred at Tunney's to the LRT. Uh, a really smooth experience, a pretty good commute. A little longer coming back than going, a little too long, but uh, uh, everything went smoothly there. I also wanted to share, did I write it down? On transit. This is interesting. So um, back in the summer, 
we launched uh, a new weekend service every 30 minutes on Route 62 to Stittsville. So previously, most of the 62 routes ended at Terry Fox in Canada. It was relatively low cost to extend those to Cardell Rec in Stittsville. So we tried it out and I just got the results back from a, a survey done in the last few weeks. Uh, on a Saturday, there were 68 people who used the 62 and 125 on Sunday who use the 62. That's just in one neighborhood in the Fringewood Granite Ridge neighborhood. So over the two days, uh, almost 200 people using that route. So that's really impressive. And I think it goes to show if there's good, frequent, reliable bus service, transit service, people will take it. Think about that. That's 200 trips that uh, didn't happen by car, that happened by bus in our community. That's great for the environment as well. Um, I've got lots of updates today, so bear with me here. I talked about the new businesses. I talked about the sod turning for the public high school. Uh, we have some development application updates and meetings coming up. Uh, on November 30th, we have a meeting about a proposed uh, uh, office development at 1037 Carp Road. It's a, a fairly small one. I'll be off uh, this afternoon dropping off some letters to the neighboring residents just to let them know about that, uh, that meeting on November 30th. We have a date uh, set December 6th for a meeting on 37 Wild Pie, and that's for the townhome development. And uh, we just confirmed yesterday a date, December 15th, for a meeting on 360 Bobo Link. This is at Bobo Link and Robert Grant in the Fernbank area. So there'll be more information about all of these on my website and on Facebook as well. I uh, invite you to check out my YouTube channel or my Facebook page on Tuesday. We posted a new video in our Developing Story series. This one's about transportation and basically future road projects in Stittsville. Uh, what are the future roads planned and, and transportation projects? So we're talking vehicles, buses, bicycles, pedestrians. Uh, why aren't they happening sooner? And uh, how could we change things so that they do happen a little bit sooner? So thanks to everyone who's wa watched that. It's about a 30 minute video. We go through all of the transportation projects, near term and long term, and uh, appreciate all the questions and comments we've had from residents on that. On Monday, we're gonna do a counselor chat on Zoom and on Facebook Live. And uh, we're gonna be going over all of the development applications. There's a couple dozen or so. Um, in various stages of approvals and review. So I wanted to go through that list and just tell you where things stand and bring you up to date. So that'll be live from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, on Monday evening for the council chat. Uh, the city has launched something called the Better Homes Loan Program. So if you're look looking to make some energy retrofits to make your home more energy efficient, uh, the city and Enviro Center have a program where they will give you a 0% loan for qualifying projects. There is information on my website, really worth checking out if you've got some renovations planned for your building soon. I want to remind you about uh, uh, outdoor rink volunteers. Uh, it's getting a little bit colder and uh, some of the rinks will be starting up later in uh, December. Uh, if you're interested in volunteering to help out at a rink in your community, please send me an email and I can help connect you with uh, the rink operators. All of our local rinks are run by volunteers. So we need people's help with, uh, with flooding, with shoveling, with maintenance, with building the rinks themselves. So, uh, you know, send me an email. Happy to connect you with the, the leads, the lead volunteers, the rink masters on each of those rinks. Uh, this week we have a planning committee meeting on Thursday. One thing I'll highlight is we're going to be reviewing the 2022 budget for planning and housing. Uh, one of the big items there is uh, affordable housing. We are uh, proposing to put $17 million towards affordable housing projects in 2022. This will be roughly matched by the, the provincial governments and the federal governments. And it brings a total to about, I think, $60 million over four years of this term of council invested into affordable housing, which is more than any term of council has done. And it's, it's needed. This will build 500 affordable housing units in 2022, roughly. Uh, but clearly we need more. There's a waiting list of about 10,000 people on the affordable housing list here in Ottawa. Last thing, a local event happening today. The Knights of Columbus, Joseph Carbonetto, uh, are organizing a indoor Christmas market at Holy Spirit Parish. It starts at 9 a.m., it goes to 3 p.m. There are 20 vendors, all local vendors, all selling some food and, and crafts and, and uh, different items at the Christmas market. So Holy Spirit Parish is the church that's across from Sacred Heart and the Rec Center, and it starts at 9 a.m. Uh, I think that is it. I think I covered everything. Thank you for watching. Merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you for watching on YouTube, on Facebook. Thank you for listening.
via podcast on Spotify or iTunes or your favorite podcast app. And uh, I'll talk to you this time next week. Take care. Bye.